It's been a long time for you. You started from Oleku down at your days at Chocolate City down to now super cool cats, your labor that you're pushing. Yeah. How has the journey been so far for you? Ah, man, the journey has been God. That's what it all boils down to. The journey has been God. You know, good times, bad times, rough roads, smooth road. We don't go here, we don't go there, we don't see this, we don't see that, we don't hear this, we don't hear that. You know, there's been years of experience for me, you know, but at the end of the day, I credit everything to God, the good, the bad, and the ugly. You know, that's why I said, how's the journey been for me? It's all been God. And yeah, so that's how the journey has been. It's been amazing. It's been an amazing experience being Ice Prince, mm -hmm. being an artist. Being a Nigerian artist that I am proudly proud of, you know, it's been an amazing experience. So, how has this year, all these years, what have we taught you as an artist and as a person? As a, what has it taught you? What lessons have you learned? What lessons have I learned yeah. as a, as just along being the a, way? Along the way, being an artist, yeah. a lot of lessons that it might take me. A, I have to open a university to actually, you know, tell all these lessons. But you know, you learn how to just be human. I've learned how to, you know. I've learned how to understand the world a little bit better. My years of being an artist has helped me travel around the world and I've experienced different cultures, different people. I have friends from literally every corner of this world from just being an artist. And you know, it's a whole new kind of knowledge, especially when the music travels and it takes you to other places. It's a different, it's a different kind of knowledge, a different kind of education that you probably wouldn't get when you are just stuck up in your only two environment. So a lot has been learned on this journey. A lot has been achieved. A lot has been gained, you know. Yeah, it's all gains and all wins and all, you know, growth. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Definitely about traveling around the world. You travel, you meet new people, you see new different types of cultures and all that. Which particular country or state have you been like, wow, I get your music and you're like, kind of shook that, wow, my music go to this place. Ah, uh, the most recent one on my mind, on my memory, the most recent one on my memory would be a place called Co Komarno ah, in that? Slovakia. Wow. That's in Europe. And I performed in a place where it was literally just me and my manager that were black. You know, it was all white and all non-English speaking. People who didn't even know. <laughs> nothing about Africa or Nigeria, you know? Mm. That's the most recent one in my head. But every day, you know, you go to get booked in different places, you get called from different places. Like we literally just got booked or oh, we're about to get booked in Philippines. You know, I've never been there. I don't even know where that is on the map. So to get calls or to get, you know, invited to certain places, it's always a whole new experience. You know what I'm saying? But the last that I remember was going to Komarno in Slovakia. They knew nothing about Afrobeats or Africa to even, you know, like most of the people that were there didn't know nothing about us. So, but oh. my music took me there. And the song that did that was I Like the Girl in Particular. Wow. Shout out to Particular, shout out to that record. It took me that far, you know? So, yeah, music is taking me to certain places that I never thought I would ever go. Wow. So, what was the reaction like getting your song in that type of, that type of country? I mean, going to a place where you don't expect to be known and then you get, you know, you get reaction and people are singing along, even if they can't speak the language, but they're singing along to it. It's, it's, it's a godly feeling. It's more than I can explain. You know, it's, it's, it's a blessing. It's, it's greatness. You know, it's a feeling that we all dream of, that every artist dreams of. You want to, you know, you want to touch people. You want people to sing along to your songs like they wrote it with you. You know, that's. That's, that's more than a feeling. It's a feeling that I can't explain, bro. I know you feel good, definitely. Very good, I definitely. feel good, you know. Definitely. Everything nice. Definitely, because you're part of those that pioneered and promoted African music on the world stage. You got the BET Awards, you got several international awards. How do you feel seeing top musicians like Whiskey, David and the likes 
now pushing the culture. How do you feel at this point? Man, in time? I am I am extremely proud of everything that I see on Afro Beats every day of my life. You know, with every artist and everybody that is contributing to the culture, man. It's I can't even believe what's happening right now. You know what I'm saying? Like every day I, I see on social media, you know, things that we are doing is beyond amazing. And I'm extremely proud of that's why I started by telling you that I'm very, very proud to be a Nigerian artist to start with. It's part of a P, it's part of a pride, not part of something to tell and see. I'll be Niger artist, it'd be big thing right now, you get me? So shout out to everybody that is contributing to the culture, every artist, every media person, DJ, you know, fan, everybody we did really push Africa. It's really our time right now and it's amazing to see. Now, do you think um, the, the, the American and let's just say the European audience are, are really willing and ready to accept the Afrobeat sound? Or do you still take a time before it grows on them? Because you see, no, I believe... you see a couple of records that, that okay, yes. You see, I believe that Afrobeat or our music, Afrobeat or Afrobeats, our music, African music, Nigerian music, South African music, Malian music, Ghana music, has always gained attention from the rest of the world. Always. Majak Fashek did amazing stuff worldwide. Fela Kutsi did amazing stuff worldwide. I can go on and on. King Sonia Day did amazing stuff worldwide. So I feel like we've always been heard and we should stop complaining that are they ready? Are they, they've always been ready. They've always opened their doors to us, just like we've always opened our doors to them. And that's what makes us people at the end of the day. That's what makes it the one world, one love and one unity that we all talk about. We've always been accepted and we just need to keep pushing till a lot more of us are accepted. It's not, nobody saying that today they start to accept us. Your African Queen was one of the biggest songs in the world almost 15 to 20 years ago. You know, so like we're still on it. It's getting better every day and we just need to keep going. You know, like black is black, Africa like, you know, is, is so powerful that the world can never ignore us. So we'll always be, we'll always be heard, and we'll, you know, it's only get better. Now that Afrobeat is getting its recognition, we see, we see that the Nigerian rap scene is practically getting, um, well, I say dead because we see most most of our musicians are beginning to compare South Nigerian rap music to that of the South African rap music. Being a rapper, you started as a rapper. Are you? Will you, will you are you proud? Of, or, or what is going on at this point in time in the rap industry hmm. or hip hop? Let's just say hip hop. Um, with hip hop in Nigeria, I'm, to be honest, I'll give kudos to all the rappers in the country because, first of all, hip hop or rap all over the world, not just in Nigeria, is not a genre that is easily accepted. Why do you say it, that? Because it's fact. Look at America. Even in America, that hip hop originated from. How many hip hop artists are really at on the A-list level? You can count maybe five to 10, but we can't count 20. I don't know if you understand what I'm yeah, saying. You can count a whole lot of rock artists, country artists, pop artists, but hip hop in itself is a genre that is, I feel like is, you know, it's not easily catchy. To be honest, if you if you have to put hip hop in all of its elements, it's not a very catchy genre. So as hip hop artists, what I advise is, besides making you know hip hop for the love of hip hop and for the passion of hip hop, learn to make bangers as a hip hop artist, as a rapper. Learn to make bangers, not just hip hop bangers, but bangers. Learn to give them feeling by superstar. I don't care if you're rapping or you're singing or they just try as much as you can. I'm on it too. I'm trying my best to bring more bangers to my fans because I feel like hip hop in itself, as a hip hop artist, you need a pop song to get some sort of a attention. Not necessarily a, a Miley Cyrus pop song or a Yemi Alade, Tiwa Savage type of pop song. But you know, you need to kind of like find a way to blend it and make it presentable to the ear. You see what I'm saying? I'm learning that trick too. I'm learning that. I'm learning that every day from a Drake, from a Jay Z, from MI, from people that I look up to. They know how to make music, rap music for the people to accept. You know, and for rappers, we need to learn that. Now we always talk about Nigerian hip hop and South African hip hop. Yo, hip hop might be one of the biggest genres in South Africa. That's cool. It's always been like that though. 
He didn't start now. It's always been like that from bigger than Nigerian. Not bigger. I'm not saying that it's been bigger than Nigerian hip hop, but hip hop in South Africa has been accepted from as long as I can remember. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Hip hop in Nigeria got re accepted really from maybe what's it, maybe Idris Abdul Karim, you know, Rugged Man, Mode Nine, Nato C, MI, Ice Prince. Yeah, you know, Nigeria has done a lot of hip hop, no doubt. But South Africa has always, as far back as I can remember, yes, Lucky Dube has been there, Breno Fassi has been there, even Chaka Chaka will vibe to that sound. But the hip hop has always been there in that country. You know what I'm saying? So, and we should, it's about time that we actually stop comparing Nigerian hip hop to South African hip hop or whatever, whatever hip hop. African hip hop is all the same, whether it comes from Ghana or from Kenya or from South Africa or from Nigeria. As long as we have something to celebrate, is a nasty seat to celebrate, is a Casper to celebrate, is a sack to celebrate, Calligraph or whoever is pop, like we just need to keep pushing it and stop making it look like Nigerian rappers are on some. <clears throat> What is Young Six doing? What is Dremel Dreezy doing? Mm. Dremel is kind of commercial though. Yeah, that's what I'm telling rappers to be. Be commercial. If J. Cole no day commercial, instead go flop. J. Cole just switched commercial to like last year. Bro, you think J. Cole doesn't need the hooks to get people's attention? Yeah, he needs it. That exactly. Is. Yeah. Exactly. As a rapper, just get something sweet in the music. I'm not mm. saying don't rap. Mm. Rap. If you want boss 16, boss 37 if you want. But put some something that people can sing along to, that kids can sing along to. I'm the kind of rapper that I want to make rap and still put a hook in there that a five-year-old can sing along to. But don't you think that's like discouraging because you have several young rappers that look up to you because coming from the days, yes. coming from your days in Chocolate and, City. Yo, my, yeah, my brother as a rapper, yeah. Do you feel, when, when they hear this, do you think they like, because I get your point, you're advising them to, to, to but there are some like still die hip hop fans that are still like how much die see there's no let me tell you something bro there's no there's no die hard hip hop fan that you want to mention that knows more hip hop than ice no, definitely. there's no hip hop song on whatever youtube whatever that you want to that i've not heard or digested or know about what do you mean real hip hop if i start to tell you real hip hop if i start to you know sticky fingers no, I've heard the name. I've heard You've the name. heard the name. You know, you know, you know, you know. <laughs> and a lot of the people that think they're real hip hop don't even know stuff like this. I can go on and on. I can mention Immortal Techniques. I can go into Wu Tang. I can go into Red Man. I can mention a lot of hip hop that the so called hip hop listeners don't even know. Mm. So I'm not saying I'm, I'm a hip hop head, bro. I know hip hop. I know the history of hip hop. I know, I know all the beefs, bro. I spend most of my time watching hip hop on YouTube. Mm. I watch more battles than I watch any other thing on YouTube. Mm. Hip hop freestyle battles. Do you get what I'm saying? So it's not about, don't have your mind stuck in a box. Do you understand what I'm saying? As dope as Kanye West is, he had to make records that girls and kids and grandmas can sing along to. As dope as Jay-Z is, he had to make songs or has to make songs that these people can sing along to. As dope as Drake so, is, as dope as Meek Mill is, simply. as dope as M.I. is, ah. as dope ah. as Mo 9 is, you have to make songs that people so can sing along put, to. So Nigerian hip-hop artists should begin to go commercial. I didn't say that. What do you mean go commercial? What does that word mean? Be... I said make music that people can relate to. Yeah, hip hop. That people can sing along to. Yeah, you sing along to hip hop too. How? The rap and all that. Like if you play a J. Cole song for me right now. You keep mentioning J. Cole. Forest Hill Drive. I can sing like, I can rap along to. That's, that's too bad. You're speaking, your you're speaking from a J. Cole fan perspective. Okay. Let me play J. Cole for my gates man and see if you rap along to it. He's a hip hop fan too. He has 50 Cent on his phone. He has um, Eminem on his phone. He listens to hip hop too, probably more than you, bro. Yeah, possibly. Because you listen to J. Cole every day doesn't mean you know hip hop. Because you have all of J. Cole's album doesn't mean you know hip hop. Because you can rap J. Cole A to Z doesn't mean you know hip hop, bro. Mm, I get point. Because you sabi Kendrick Lamar techniques, don't mean say you sabi hip hop. Mm. <laughs> Hip hop is for the people, you know what I'm saying? Like you have to make music for the people. Don't rap for you and your friends. Don't make rap songs that you and your friends will just keep on your phone and be jamming every day in your house. Bro, put a hook on it. 
make it make it sing make it bro we're talking about hip-hop one of the biggest hip-hop song in this country this is the way that they do me my my from my brother yeah, mi yeah. he was literally singing on that song bro and it's a dope ass rap song he won all the rap awards and that you can't argue yeah, so what are you talking about make music for the people bro let me make music for your your punchlines and your metaphors your metaphors you can't even speak more metaphors than me bro i promise you go and ask the whole jet and they will tell you if i ask africa <laughs> so that's your word talk about punchlines <laughs> and rap ice does it better than anybody else bro ask my ask my daddy m m i he will tell you ask all the best rappers that you know on this continent they'll tell you about ice I'm yeah. talking from south to east to west everywhere. Ask all the rappers. I, I know the So I'm telling you this. Yeah. I'm telling you this. Don't get caught up thinking you know hip hop more than everybody else. Mm. Because you just don't know what the next man knows or how, what his catalog sounds like. Mm. Or what his playlist is. As you are downloading J. Cole, you don't know which Talib Kweli I'm downloading. Mm. As you are downloading your Kendrick Lamar, you don't know which common I'm downloading you get what i'm saying so like people listen to stuff differently and people express stuff differently and my advice to hip-hop rappers whether you're a punchline rapper metaphor rapper whatever you rap hip-hop real hip-hop fake whatever hip-hop you think you know my advice is please make music for the people and okay. make your children proud make your family proud don't go broke rap is a punchline that only you and your friends understand bro so let's just get it direct now in the present in the Nigerian music industry, how do you define hip hop according to Ice Price? How do I define Nigerian hip hop? How would you des describe hip hop in the present? Because you present in the Nigerian music industry, how would you describe hip hop? I don't understand that question. Okay, Currently in Nigerian music industry, yeah, how would I do? With the, with the how tide, would I describe Yeah, with the way it is flowing and all that, how would you define I think hip -hop? I think it's a genre that is growing. It's been growing from even when we had mode nine and when we had rugged man they were still struggling with pop artists so it's always it's been growing i think we was we're doing pretty better than five years or ten years ago because i can mention young six dremel drizzy yc i can mention pretty boy deal i can mention a couple rappers that are actually doing stuff right now in my own opinion what made mi go into that studio and record you rappers to fix your life was to address the current situation that the <laughs> no, Nigerian M.I. was in his feelings. <laughs> I'll tell you that for sure. M.I. was in his But it worked. It worked. They actually yeah, stood I mean, up and smart, started though. going, saying yeah, replies here and there. It's like, it's like, it's like when it took M.I. to wake them it's up. Like, it's like when Jay-Z signed the death of auto-tune because rappers were all singing and putting auto-tune on their vocals and Big Daddy came and said, Hey, f*** y'all, wake up. Make, you know what I'm saying? Death of auto-tune. And then it brought back a sort of revolution to hip hop in America. Just like when Kendrick Lamar did the verse with Big Sean and is it Big Crit? That verse, is it Control, Controller? That verse that was just ill, that just was just crazy ill, where he said, I'm the king of New York. That woke rappers up. So once in a while, the big dogs actually do these things, just like M.I. did in Nigeria, fix it. Like he sparked a fire, which is cool, it's expected of him. He's the, you know what I'm saying? He's an OG, every rapper in this country respects M.I. I don't, you know, I don't care what you spit, gospel, hip hop, metaphor. You gotta, you gotta know that Mi is is dope. You feel me? So it it came from the right person. It was time for him to say something like that. So he did it. And like I said, he was in his feelings when he said that. You see what I'm saying? Like that's my brother. If you like him, come and see. But you see, and yeah. So once in a while, it's cool that rappers do that. But it doesn't mean that while they're doing that, it doesn't. When Mi did fix up your life. There were other rappers that had rap songs going on, right? And there's something I want to talk about, please. Don't tell me that Zilatan is not a rapper. Or, um, jo uh, what's the song? What's the, what's the song? Zanku, Legu, Bro, don't tell me that that's not a rap song. Because it gained commercial success. If you tell me that that song is not a rap song, then you're telling me that 50 Cent in the club is not a rap song. Mm. I'm liking this comment. I don't even know what I'm saying. So yeah. a rapper's not doing it. Zilatan is doing it. He just came. Is Naramali not doing it? Naramali is doing it. That's it's a not, rapper. Yeah, this that's just last day. Like I'm it talking about. It doesn't. But at least they try, Shabi. Whether that last yeah. year or that yesterday, but at least we try. Yeah, we did try. We did try. Yeah. <laughs> so y'all stop. Fino no be rapper. Na rapper. Allah be no be rapper. Na rapper. So why did they <laughs> make a look like Nigerian rap? They suffer. What thing that they talk? Shut the <laughs> up. Nigerian rap. They kill and pass any other rap. <laughs> 
for Africa. Yeah, well, well, as they win an international award for one for now. Who? Nigeria. You talk about Nigeria. As how many Apart international? From... Wait, wait, wait. Who's won any international award from anywhere in Africa with rap? Name you, them. You now. No, I'm saying since after me, mm. all over Africa, who did? Nobody. So what are you talking but about? Quite a few have got nominated. Um, what are you talking about? A nomination or win? Don't no. call me a nominee, bro. <laughs> what are you no, which one is nomination? Which one is nomination? YC, Dremo, Young Six. I could go on and on and on. That's rap. Therefore, niggas, Ice Prince, nigga. Therefore, rap. Therefore, in conclusion, Ice Prince says there's nothing wrong with Nigerian hip hop. There's nothing wrong with it. Thank you. There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it. We're on the right track. Every rapper listening, keep doing your thing, bro. I don't feel like rap is not working and it, it will work just keep doing it bro people are doing this thing and you know what i'm saying like just do it the way that people zlatan did it the way that people could understand and it's working just like buster rhymes did it the way americans could understand and it worked do what like, works for you do what works As, you know <laughs> bro shout out to all the rappers in nigeria man we really do big things forget that you just fought for them forget that <laughs> forget that we really do things now let's go Away from the discussion, let's go to the process of making music. Before you record or before you work on an album or a project, yeah. do you have like a ritual you go through? You know, most artists and creatives have like a ritual they go through before they get into the studio. Yeah. Like the only ritual I can probably think of is my conversation with God. You know, I always talk to God during the recording process of what I want to write about, what I want to talk about. And also maybe consultation. Consultation is a ritual as well. You know, you consult with your friends, consult with you know your producers, DJs, people around you, sample opinions. You see, like that's pretty much it. There's nothing more than that. I've been giving so much into the industry now. How do you feel when fans on, on social media tag you an upcoming artist? What do you have to say? In I way? laugh about it because I've always called myself that. And I'll forever call myself that. Even if I get to the state of being Jay Z, I'll always call my. I'll always see myself as somebody coming up. Mm -hmm. You know, no matter. Even if you're Mark Zuckerberg, bro, you want to be Jeff Bezos. You see, Mark Zuckerberg will be upcoming person to Bill Gates. Mm -hmm. So, I've always tagged myself that, and I always. So. Copyright is probably becoming an issue in the industry. We see that um, artist music is getting pirated and all that. What's your take on that? Um, with piracy, something again, again, it's something that we've been dealing with for years. Um, my take is we're getting there, we're getting better. With things like the internet now, it's you know easier to you know control your stuff and handle your stuff by yourself or with your team. You know, shout outs to the you know internet platforms that we all have to promote music now. They're able to help us a little cover that piracy a little bit, even though it doesn't, it still exists. I'm not saying it's an issue that it, mm. is completely solved, mm. but as a country, as a nation, we're getting better and we're getting there. And I've always said over the years that I think the pirates have kind of like contributed to the music too, because they have spread the music to places that we didn't expect it to get to. Fact, I went to Liberia and I realized that it was more Alaba mixtapes than any other thing there. And I still in there. That was a channel to taking our music to that side of the world, or that side of Africa, or that side of West Africa. So it, it kind of contributed, even though it's something that we all want to curb out. You get me? But like I said, with internet now and you know all these platforms, artists are able to control their stuff, their, their stuff themselves. So yeah. Let's talk about your record label, Super Cool Cat. Is there any plan to sign artists in the coming future? Oh yeah, there's definitely plans to put on artists in the coming future. But, you know, right now, Ice Press is the main focus of the mm. label. Mm. We're trying to, you know, we're trying to, we're trying to show a different side to Ice Press with the label. And with that comes other artists and other producers, you know, new producers and new artists and stuff like that. You're going to get to see that very soon. Mm. Just for now, I just feel good, you know. Mm. Now, like in a recent interview, you say you are looking for a wife and all that. Uh, what, what, what's, what's with that? Now, let me correct that again. I never said I was looking for a wife. Oh. I said I would love to get a wife someday. I said I would love to get married one day. I didn't say I was looking for a wife. Please, because that <laughs> thing has actually caused plenty of problems. Right. My DMs are not the same in. no more. <laughs> Oh please, I, I'm not looking for a wife. But I big that the ice should be able to accept all the DMs coming in now. Yeah, I mean, would they see them? Would they see them? Would they see them? I see you. 
All of you DM me, I see you. I see you. <laughs> but yeah, we'll talk. But I mean, we'll get married someday by God's grace. When, at the right time. As an artist and as a Nigerian, what's your take on the direction the country is taking at the moment? Um, with the direction the country is taking, I feel like we need to come together a little bit more. You know, we are, I, I'm, I'm very impressed at how Nigerians are quick to respond to issues and quick to come together. But we can do better, you know what I'm saying? We can do better and we need, you know, we need to have more freedom of speech. We need to voice out our opinions a little bit more, which we are doing. You know, but we need to keep that going. I'm wishing the new government, you know, good luck because they're literally just starting. You know what I mean? It's a new term. I'm sure day two they are in a fresh, new mood, new everything. You know, so we're looking forward to a bright future. We're looking forward to. I believe in the government so much. I believe in my vice president Osibanjo. I believe in my president Buhari. I believe that they have the nation's interest at heart. I believe that they are going to, you know, make they can make Nigeria better, and I'm hoping that you know they stick to their plans, everything that they told us to make us vote for them. I'm hoping that they stick to it, and I'm hoping God, you know, sees them through, you know, taking care of Nigeria because the truth is Nigeria is. Think about it. Nigeria is the most populous black nation in the world. We're over 200 million people. We're being compared with like countries like Brazil and stuff like that. So. It's not an easy country to govern or take care of, especially with so many different yeah. ethnicities yeah. Yeah. and tribes and stuff like that. It's hard to control that amount of people. But I'm wishing them luck. I'm wishing them, you know, good luck. I like some. Of, I like some of the things I see. I kind of disagree with some of the things that I hear about on the news, like the Ruga plan that's going on around right now. I, I'm not too clear with what that is about, so I'm not totally in support of that. I think they should check that whole, you know, proposal properly again and sell it to us in a way that we can truly understand and let it make sense. And if that's going to happen, let everybody be settled properly. But, you know, apart from that, I just wish the, go the government luck. Mm. You know, I wish the government more, more power and more wisdom and more knowledge over BS. We don't want to be... I don't want to be on Instagram and seeing this senator doing that, that senator doing that, this one doing that, that one doing that. Nigeria is bigger than all those kind of smellogies, you know, but I'm actually the biggest black nation in the world. Think about that for a second. Now, as we fuck up, every black don't fuck up. Now, aside the government, now let's talk about the youth. See that due to some kind of situation that they find themselves in, they're getting tempted into doing things that and they are not that are not right by society. What would be your advice to Nigerian youths of today? Ha! My advice to Nigerian youths, we say, man, use your head, yeah? Use your head well, bro. Surround yourself with the right people. Be careful the company you mix with. Be very, very careful. Things are moving so fast in this generation. Things are moving so quick. Everybody's in a hurry to be somebody, which is cool. Which is okay because now ginger, you know, and hurry, the ginger you want, you know what I mean? But use your head, be careful, be careful. There's so many stories going on around these days that some of them you can't like, ah, freely. You get like, be careful who you, you know, associate with, how you move, and how you do your business. I tweeted something today, I said, crack is whack. Stay away from that. Like, Stay away completely from that. I have never in my life, and I will never, ever, ever do, it. do that. Drug, anything, you know, you know, I would never, ever do that. Like, it's really, 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 really whack. I tweeted that today because I heard a lot of, I was hearing something today that messed up my mind. That really, really messed up my mind about some of my colleagues, and it's a lot going on, man. People, different people have different stories. Different people have different, experiences but I heard some news about some people that I know today today literally today I really messed up my day and I tweeted that I just said crack is work please you know like don't ever do that like I will never ever do that and I advise anybody that looks up to ice experience or anybody that you know believes in ice experience that one I beg I beg I you know, thought, stay away from those things stay away from those things you know what I'm saying like Hustle legit, hustle nicely, hustle wisely, use your head, 
use your hair properly and talk to God. Talk to God. God's voice is actually the best voice. If human beings they talk to you, your earlobe says you really disturb them. But God's voice, you don't even disturb your earlobe. Like you just pay. Like God's voice not the best. So you know, that's my advice to every youth out there. You know, put God in everything you do. And the advice I can think of right now, as they talk to you right now, please stay away from crack. Shit is whack. I feel good. You know, everything nice. Everything nice. Boy, Ice Prince, Amadi, West Africa, Nigeria, J Town in the building. And right now you're watching Sahara TV. Sahara TV is where it all goes down. Booyah!